So we've had a lot of sessions with various levels of expertise in VR, and uh, we're going to conclude with our last two sessions. Uh, we are going to begin with uh, Bill's session on YVR, so YVR in a, in a situation of retail. And we're going to follow that. It'll be probably 25 minutes, and we're going to follow that with Aaron Hilton, who will talk about the future of MR. So uh, welcome, and I'm going to pass it on to Bill. Welcome, Bill. Let's give him a round of applause. Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Bill. I'm not a real panda, but, uh, but I'm a VR developer. And also, I'm an instructor of the IDX program at the CDM. I'm also a co-founder of a baby store in Richmond. So here's the store I have in Richmond. Today, I want to share you my VR solution for that retail store. Why VR? So we know VR is cool. Everyone think, oh, okay, VR is a good business. VR can do everything. However, as a teacher, I always ask my student, can you use a VR to solve a real world problem? My problem is really straightforward. I have the store, but I'm allowed, allowed to sell or physical display some certain product in, the, in that physical location because of some competitor agreement the vendor made before. But what I, I'm allowed, I'm allowed to sell this online. I'm allowed to take the in-store order. So my biggest problem will be how come my customer can actually look and feel those products online. So I start to use those tools. So it's a 5W and a 1H to start my brainstorm in order to solve those problems. So I take the who part as the most important part to start with. So this persona is a combination of the real customer and the project persona. We use the two called persona to actually explore the real needs of our customers. We try to understand what exactly they want. Through the research of the persona, we also can find out some other issues our customer may face. You can see this. I saw this many times on the street. So we got those problems. So instead of going to the VR solution immediately, I start to question myself, is there a better way than VR? If I just want to promote a product, why not I just build a YouTube video? That is really simple. So I took those considerations seriously in order to find out my differentiators if I want to use VR. So I also strongly believe VR could be a really good selling feature in store because it will engage and create a direct, direct connection with our customer when they learn how to play from our salesperson. So I, I decide to make our first version of the VR solution actually is in store. And also, it will facilitate the payment process, so in-store. Because our first dev version, we don't have time to actually build a VR shopping cart. So you, hold on. you will see the people we set up the VR device in-store and actually allow the people not just the playing, also can talk, can introduce those ideas to other people. So the, for the mobile and out of store experience will be our next step. And we will make for those home users who may not have expensive uh, VR rigs. So <clears throat> this is how we come up like a value proposition. We use a tool named Agile Statement 
to come up our uh, value proposition. Now we get into our development phase. You will see this is the product I trying to sell virtually. Those products are really highly like uh, customizable. We have to think out a, a good way to actually showcase those features. My entire production, I took those steps for like a start with the come up with user story. So we use a tool named like a user story to help us to plan a features. So for each one project may have like many, many user stories, but this is just one example. From that uh, example, you will see I come up a user story to design how user gonna interact with my VR showroom, which gonna list a future a feature list. So you can see that user story can be break down to different features. After I have those features, I have to use another tool named Bullseye to decide which feature are high priority, which, high, which features are low priority. So my entire develop process is based on the iteration. It's really agile. So you can see, start from the plan, build, test, evaluation. So we keep that iteration cycle until things get right. So once we have the prioritized feature decide, we start our prototyping. So with modeling, and build the environment, and dump it into the Unity. So once all feature like finished, like uh, the critical feature being finished, so make sure that is uh, playable, and then we start our user test and to collect the feedback. You can see through the video, there are lots of like a UI floating on the top of the stroller. So we think initially when we designed that, we think it's super cool. So when the people close by the stroller, all those UI pop up and then the people can make a selection of different colors. It's interesting. So but once we did the user test with our persona group, guess what? 80% of them dislike the way of interaction. The reason is simple. They think those 2D elements push them away from that immersive environment. Also make the entire product looks really complicated. You know, people hate really complicated interface. So we also face a lot of like a technical uh, challenge. For example, like we're trying to simulate the, the, the pooling stroller the feedback in the real time, so in the real physics. So this, you can see, it's really hard. So in order to let our user to feel the real motion of the stroller, we also add an alternative way, like a remote control. So actually, I want that in my real stroller. But uh, this is some feature we trying to show the motion of the stroller. Now is the time to show you the difference between the first iteration and the beta release. So yeah, so we took this, we still keep this as our like uh, old version, like archive version, keep in the track of history. So one tip for you when you develop like an agile way, keep each, each version. Like make sure every time, any time you can go back. So we also add the simulation, like you can grab the car seat and put it onto the stroller. So this is the new version after the user test. Because the user gave us the feedback, you want to showcase the stroller. Why don't you just create a control panel? and the people can just swap the color easily, and that makes sense. 
So you also can disassemble all those parts, and you can teleport, go there, and grab the individual parts and look through. So now you may wonder what the current status after we implement that VR solution. Guess what? No doubt. You can see our online and in-store sales are both increased a lot just because we put the VR device in-store. So here's uh, some future plan. You will see I, we also designed a lot of like uh, new features. For example, the shop, uh, VR shopping cart or other functionality. So we hope like uh, you will see some advanced version in the future. So we still believe VR can give a retailer an infinity capacity and the capability. So if you, you want to see the physical demo, please visit our CDM booth or just uh, visit our store in Richmond physically. Thank you. That's it. That's all my talk. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. See? Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Anything about the, uh, the development cycle, maybe, the process? or yeah. Bill loves questions, loves hard <laughs> questions. <laughs> I was just curious what platform, what VR platforms uh, your app is running on? Is it just like Gear VR or no, now it's what did H you decide? Uh, now it's HTC Vive. So you can see here, go back to our, sorry, our, our uh, value, uh, value proposition. Oh, hold on a second. I think here. So we use that agile statement to, to show people the value proposition. So we specifically mention it's HTC Vive. So was there a reason why you chose specifically the HTC Vive? I know you you pointed out there a little bit, but but why not Oculus as an example or or another platform? You know, in store there's a lot of traffic, people easy to move around. So the the Oculus is more for like a sitting experience. So far from my understanding, I know the, the, a lot of developers have created like a different way, but uh, for the default way, it's more sitting. So I want like uh, the people can easily like move around, give them like a uh, the scare room something like a uh, so. Just a scalable and also easy for us. For example, if we set up one device in the fixed location, which means we cannot shift around, it's hard to move, make a movement. But with that capability, the people can walk around. We can. You can see the image there. There's a shelf. So just right beside the prison. So if it's a fixed position, which means that part we cannot even put the shelf. So we can temporarily move things around for that. Yeah. Other question here. Hi. So is that based upon like modeling of one product, or have you been modeled multiple products that you're showing to the audience? OK. So now you can see my problem. All my things, uh, my, all my solution is based on the problem. So, so far the only problem I have is for certain type of like a product, like a stroller, I cannot allow it to sell like or display it in store. So that is the one thing. But uh, in the future, like I mentioned, we also got requests from other like a manufacturer. One who is like a one one company is like a Hape, like they they're making all the wooden toys. They have like a over thousand SKU, so no retailer have that space can display all the things like for for the retail. So they what they want us is create a VR experience because VR is infinity space. So to actually showcase their product, so that's under our continual plan. So now, so far, we only have one stroller as our demo. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, just to follow up. So then in that case, when you're showing the VR product, it, are the customers more interested in just the, f the visual aspects of like customizing it themselves? Or actually, can they feel even like a difference in the, the products? 
Yeah, that's something we trying to build like a uh, like a physical simulation. So you will see. So not just a custom customized uh, feature. We also make the movement, like make the motion. So the customer will feel, wow, that's uh, interesting. Like uh, they never saw that the stroller can move that fast or move that slow. But uh, that's some like a like a parameter we took from the real stroller. So we know maybe the view, what's the material of the view. We're trying to simulate as real as possible. So. Other questions? Yeah. yeah. I was wondering how long it took you to build the stroller, um, like the 3D. From scratch, from yeah. 3D model? It took uh, two people together, work together about a month. Okay. Amount so from the one like a scratch, no model, and uh, to the end to have interaction. So, have you looked into any like scanners so you can scan um, new products more quickly and scale? Because, like, if you go to new and new products, like it would take a really long time to build a 3D model of every single one, right? Yes, that's exactly what uh, we want to do. But it's so far, the current technology, you know, to clean up the scanning like a uh, result, act actually took the same amount of time. We tried okay. before. So, especially for that uh, complicated gear, so all those parts, some details, because we want to do the real physical simulation. So we cannot uh, have like a bro broken parts. We have to perfectly match the, the exactly item so yeah I know I want to have that good scanner for the next step yeah, yeah. And thank then you it would look more realistic too yeah yeah one more question could you go back to the um, the growth graph uh, the the financial growth the financial okay sure um, Yeah, so uh, how much of the growth is attributed to actual um, customers purchasing it based on the fact that you have this virtual reality model versus like a demand, uh, an increase in demand in Richmond for baby strollers? Like how, how are you measuring the fact that growth is actually attributed to B VR? Yeah, so that's uh, the interesting part. So we, oh, initially the people come to store, they know we don't have those uh, demo, like uh, this model in store. So they start asking around like uh, uh, where they can buy. So we start introducing their, like uh, we said, we, we definitely can sell online, but uh, we, we cannot uh, display that. But uh, then people wondering like, what's the quality, what the feel, then we show the, uh, the VR demo. After the VR demo, if they decide make an order, then we count into the data. So if if they say, okay, I will look around uh, maybe other places, see the real product, then we don't we don't count in store like older data. And uh, but maybe the, the person gonna come back to order reorder online. So then we count into the online data. So through that way we got the rough idea how it actually increased. That uh, answer your question, kind of? Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, Bill. Yeah. Uh, put your hands together and let's uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.